right, Freddy. Here we go, man. I'm going to turn your DX400 into a uh, DX500. Now, before I took it out of here, I made sure it keyed up and everything, and I checked the bias. <laughs> the resistor was gone here. And you had... 10 volts, a little over 10 volts on this side for the bias, not 0.10, 10 volts, you still had 0.8 here um, on this side, so the resistor was still good, uh, we got some cleanup work to do, here's this, somebody put this in here, and made a, uh, a combiner for it. Um, see, there was fire in the hole at one time. Somebody's had to solder an iron on the uh, on the side to relay, but it still works. It's fine. We're going to eliminate the fuse holders. No need for that. I don't know if the meter works or not. We'll put some new feedback in it. We're going to put some new uh, SO239s in it. These two casts were shot out. They only showed 50. Not even, not even a Pika Ferret, I mean. So they're both shot out. We're going to have to change those. Um... This is what they had on the uh, on the combiner. I checked the variable, see if it's still any good. Um, so that's where we're at right now. I've got the schematics for a uh, 500. There are some changes that need to be made for the 500. I still need to check these metal clads. Uh, and while I got the board out, I need to check other things. Now, you remember the last DX500 had that little, just barely not touching. And uh, there's a reason. So much solder's on there. How far it's sticking down. You just push down on the board, it'll short out. So we're gonna clean that up, get that short, and I'm gonna put something under there just to make sure you have no burnt traces, which is a good thing. Very good. Uh, so this thing is salvageable. Uh, it does key up. Preamp seems to work. Got a hot resistor right here. I'm gonna have to change that. Um, now, I did a DX500 and I just, it had the cheaper pills in it. And I just dropped HGs in it and it worked great. So, we're just gonna go back with the values of a DX500, drop some HGs in here, and, uh, should work fine. Um, I'm gonna change power wires. Uh, I'm probably gonna change these two, or because one of them's burn up. Nasty soldering iron. Hack boy's been in it. Um. This is a working 667, but the switch is gone. Uh, I don't want to hack it. It's kind of beat up in the front. But, uh... This one here... Input, output. I can just use some 213. I, that was a 313, I guess. 316 coax, uh... Just change it. Um, this is a DX500 here. 
And this is what's left of a of the uh, 1600. Man, they burn up the uh, output and the input and combiners. So anyway, I got a combiner right here. Um, I believe I have a metal clad. 667 has a metal clad here. Um, the 500. It's got a DM15 uh, output cap. Which, uh, no, no, no. Uh, what did I hack? Oh, yeah. I think I have the 100. It calls for 91, but they are 100. I'm going to put a metal clad in here between here and there. Uh, just so it stays stable. Um, I can hack the bias out of here. Because if this resistor goes, the bias like shoots up like crazy and it, it's a pill killer uh, for sure. So, alright, that's where we're at. There's your sink. There's the other part of it. Top covers here. Uh, that's a white line DX400. Same thing, and this is a 500, but the, uh, this is a white line 500, but the, the face isn't as nice a shape. So, you notice on the 667, they don't have the fuse holders, unless somebody's already done a power wire upgrade, which I believe they have, uh, up here, so, so. That's what's going to happen here also. It's going to eliminate the fuses. No point in that. And uh, we're going to get the thing going for you. Alright, so hopefully all goes well. Pray for the best. <laughs> uh, okay. So you. Yeah. I'll catch you later, man. We're going to get to work on this thing. 73's to you. Thank you, Freddy. And, uh, 73's everyone. Alley Cat, Fat Cat Amps, and I'm gone.